Well, I want to welcome you to our Sunday evening Bible study. We're so glad that you chose to join us, and I hope you'll get a lot out of the study tonight. I certainly got a lot out of studying for it, and uh, we're over in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses uh, 14 through 18, and I'm going to talk to you about how that uh, life is full with a lot of trouble, or afflictions as the Bible calls it, but it's really our, our vernacular today, we would say it's trouble. Someone well said one time that uh, in this life, you're either headed for trouble or you're in trouble right now, or you're going away from trouble. Job, which is one of the oldest books in the Old Testament, that was the first one uh, that the Holy Spirit gave to us in our uh, Old Testament uh, scriptures. Job titled it this way in Job 14.1. He said, man is born of a woman and is of a few days and full of trouble. And of course, you know, trouble, as all of us know, is going to come to our life. Sometimes trouble is by our own makings, our own doings. We create trouble for ourselves by uh, doing stuff that's foolish. I look back and I made some bad decisions and got into trouble because of things that I initiated. And then sometimes trouble is not something that you initiate, but it's something that comes to you. You don't even see it. It could be a an emergency health situation that comes all of a sudden. You didn't see that coming. And all of a sudden, you got a new situation you've got to deal with. I remember Pastor uh, Larry Epchurch used to say, uh, sometimes he said, you know, you're only one doctor's appointment away from your whole life being ch changed because of, of the situation that you're looking as a health concern. So trouble comes sometimes. We don't even know it's coming. Um Sometimes you get a, a bill that you didn't see coming. and Where am I going to get this money? Or maybe, you know, a situation happens in your life with a friend that deserts you or you're dating someone. All of a sudden they say, I don't want to date you any longer. And it produces trouble and anxiety in your life. Or it could be a, a situation where it's a family situation and all of a sudden trouble has come to your family. And um, so that's what we're going to be dealing with today. And I hope the Lord will use this in your life. You know, if you look at all the Old Testament characters, and as I was doing this study, I started thinking through how many people in the Old Testament, God sent trouble into their life, but God would use the trouble to build something in their life that they did not have before. I think of, um, I think of Job. Job was very, very wealthy. All his children were doing good. And of course, Satan came to to God and said, if you take all this blessing away that you've given to Job, he will curse your name and he'll have nothing to do with you. And so God allowed Satan to bring trouble into his life and he lost his children, as you know, and he lost his wealth and he lost all his cattle and, and, and all the things that he had. And he was down to nothing. And of course, Job said, though, he, though God, you know, curses me and sends me this into my life, I will not continue to, 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 I'll get to the point where I won't serve him. I won't do that. Even though he slays me, I'm going to continue to serve him. And he proved to Satan that his his faith was genuine and his love for God was genuine. And of course, God rebuilt his whole life and gave him wealth again and brought him back more children. And, and you know, uh, that's a story of how God uses trouble sometimes to test us and to build something in his, into our hearts, by his heavenly resources that he sends, his grace comes and, and ministers at that time during when we're going through trouble, that we, if we will call out to God, God will, will bring his heavenly resources to our life. I think of Moses, and here he had killed an Egyptian, and now he's hiding, and uh, he's hiding in Midian, and, and he's away from the Egyptian government's uh, land. And God said, I want you to go back, and I want you to... Uh, Lead my my people out of Egypt, and I'm going to use you to destroy Pharaoh. And you know, immediately Moses said, "God, I can't do that. I can't speak very well." And Pharaoh is looked as a god to all those Egyptians, and even to the Hebrews that were there. They looked to him as a god. And you want me to go and do what? You want me to tell him that let my people go, and that you're going to send ten different kinds of plagues? And those plagues would be used by you to let those people go. go. God, I can't do that. So from a man that had no faith and doubted his abilities, God would build faith into him. God would, his grace would give him his brother to help him speak, Aaron. 
and God would give him speech even to talk to Pharaoh. And you know, trouble, I'm sure that Moses, that was trouble that he never thought he'd ever see. And you know, God used that trouble in his life by his grace to build us a leadership quality in Moses that he never had before. I think of Abraham, and God used trouble in his life. And, you know, toward the, uh, I mean, he let he went to the earth from the, he was from the Ur of the Chaldees, and, and then God leads him to the promised land that God would give to the Hebrews, and Messiah Jesus would come through the lineage of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And can you imagine the trouble that he must have gone through when God said, I want you to take your son up, up on Mount Moriah, and I want you to sacrifice him on that mountain. And God used that trouble in his life and that adversity in his life and gave him grace to do it and faith to do it. And what happened? You know the story. A little lamb in a, was caught in a thicket of a bush. And he said, no, I don't want you to suffer, suffer, offer your son. I want you to offer this little lamb as a sacrifice. So God used trouble in his life to build something in him he never had before. And then you look at David. and He's crowned king of of Israel, and yet he won't get the throne for many years because King Saul would pursue him and try to kill him. And he would escape into the caves of the mountains in the mountains of Engedi, and he would hide. And for years he was hiding, and he was talking to God, and he was asking God to help him. And people said, well, you need to go, and you could kill him if you wanted to because he was very, very mighty in battle in his ability to, to battle with people. And we know that because he said he, kinged a, he killed a bear and he killed a lion in his early life. And he could have killed King David, but he said, no, I'll touch not the Lord's anointed. But God was building something in him. So he was calling on God, and God gave him the grace to take that trouble and to be patient. And then one day, King Saul fell on his own sword and took his life, as you know. And uh, then he became the king of Israel. And that kingdom would never pass from him. All his ancestors down through Jesus would be in the lineage of King David. So God used trouble in his life. I look at Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery. And uh, he goes down to Egypt, Egypt, and he's a slave. And he is trying, Potiphar, who was over him, his wife tried to seduce Joseph. And Joseph would not succumb. And so she accused him of trying to seduce her. So they put him in prison. And what happens? He calls down to God to help him. And the heavenly resources come. And what happens? God in his providence and in his timing makes him the second in command of Egypt. And he's able to get his, his whole family down to Egypt where the, when the famine would come. And God would use his family for those 430 years that they would be in Egypt, all because of Joseph's trouble in his life. And so I want to give you in uh, four ways that during your time of trouble or affliction that God wants to uh, help you maintain a proper perspective on going to God when you face trouble and not trying to face it alone by yourself or telling other people about it, but you don't even tell God about it. God can change your circumstances. God can use your trouble in your life, but you got to call out to him. So the first thing I would give to you is that God uh, uses afflictions or trouble to help us to in anticipate glory. You know what it says in the scriptures? I want to read this verse to you. Second Corinthians ch uh, chapter 4, verse 14, it says this, For we know that one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus, and present us with you. Indeed, everything is for your benefit, so that as grace is extends through more and more people, it may, uh, it may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. Let me stop there for a minute. God uses trouble sometimes to bring grace to your life and for you to focus on his glory so that others can receive grace from watching your life and that it produces thanksgiving in others to the glory of God. It goes on to say, Therefore we do not give up, even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light afflictions or light troubles are producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. In other words, our troubles are being used, light affliction, afflictions, our troubles are being used 
so that we start thinking more about heaven, thinking about the glory of God, and that our, our focus is not on our afflictions, but how these afflictions are being used by God to help other people receive grace and be thankful, and that we, we get our focus on not here what I'm going through, but one day I won't have to face these troubles or these afflictions again. In heaven, His, his glory will shine through our life. We'll never have to face sin again. We'll never have to face afflictions again. We'll never have to face trouble again. But we'll be in a perfect environment with a perfectly new glorified body. And it goes on to say, so we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is eternal or unseen is eternal. So, you know, our afflictions help us to anticipate glory. And, you know, when you start thinking about these light afflictions, the Bible calls our afflictions light. And you know, sometimes I'm thinking, this ain't light what I'm going through, is it? I mean, well, how's this light? Well, it's light compared to when you're going to be in eternity forever and ever, and you'll never face a trouble again. You'll never face afflictions again. But you know, another thing about the word light there is, I look at it this way, uh, what I'm going through is, is light compared to to what some people are suffering. You know what? We live in America. We don't really have to suffer persecution. We don't have to suffer that if I went to church, I'd be persecuted. You know, I remember one time a missionary came from um, Yugoslavia in a missions conference, and he was talking about it that, that in Yugoslavia, he can preach the gospel there. They have churches. And he said, our churches are filled with people because they're go they have communism and there's no hope. And so he said, our churches would be, would, would be filled with people. But he said, here's the problem in Yugoslavia. The moment you get saved, they don't care if you get saved, the government doesn't. But if you identify with a local church and get baptized, you are stripped of your job benefits. And he said, what would happen was a man could be a, a nuclear engineer or he could be an engineer for a big company. The moment he gets saved, they're fine. But if you got baptized, then you, you were stripped of being an engineer in Yugoslavia. And you could, get, you could get a job with the government uh, sweeping floors of being a janitor. In other words, all your monetary advantage was stripped of you the moment you followed Christ. Well, we don't face that in America like that. I haven't been stripped of, of a title or a job just because I got baptized years ago. We don't face that. So, you know, our afflictions are light compared to believers all around the world who have to suffer because of their, their, deci their decision to, to follow Christ. And then, you know, another thing is, my afflictions are, are light compared to what Christ suffered. I mean, I haven't been brought through six mock, mock trials. I haven't been, you know, accused of blasphemy by being the Son of God and persecuted and whipped after those trials, hung on a cross in shame and nakedness, people accusing you of being the Son of God and you being the King of the Jews. I haven't had to suffer like that. So our afflictions are light compared to others that have suffered or compared to Christ. Our, 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 fix, our, our trouble or our afflictions are light compared to what I deserve. I mean, if I really got for every sin, if I got the just recompense or the, the reward for that sin in, in judgment time in heaven, man, it would be humiliating and it would be something that I would never want to do. But I, I don't deserve any of that. Christ has forgiven me totally of all sins, and I never have to face God about my sin, and neither do you. But our, you know, my afflictions are light compared to the blessings that I've had in my life. I think about all the things that God has given me, a wonderful home, a wonderful wife, wonderful kids, ministry opportunity, some great friends in our church that are brothers and sisters in Christ, and you know, I think of the blessing of coming in here every Sunday and seeing all our teenagers and our students serving at the doors. And many of them, they love Jesus and they want to serve Him. That's a tremendous blessing. I think of the blessing of God providing a car for my wife and myself and a house and a warm home. The blessing of food every week that God has given to us. And so my afflictions are light compared to that. Well, the, the other thing is that our Second thing is our, the, the, our afflictions are light and as we appreciate the heavy things that he's done for us. Um, I look back through the years 
and people in our church sometimes will have illness or they'll have an accident or they'll have surgery and they're gone for six, seven weeks and they come back. Many times, the first time they come back, they just cry in the service. You know what they miss? They may have a lot of things, but they miss the fact that, you know, they're with God's people singing songs to God and, and listening to preaching. And, you know, they come back and they appreciate the heavier things of fellowship and love and, 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 and being able to worship together. The third thing is that, you know, our temper, temporal things help us to appreciate eternal things. When we go through hard times in this life, we learn to appreciate heavenly resources. And can I tell you something? When you go through trouble, whether you are, you know, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's family problems and you got struggles going on within the family and with each other, or whether it's job situations, why don't you go to God? Instead of telling everybody else, why don't you go to God? And you got heavenly resources you can bring down through God's grace. And He'll do things for you and wonders that you would never imagine He would do because He's a great God that loves us and wants to help us. But we got to call on Him and we got to ask Him. And the fourth thing is that... Our outward pain helps us to accelerate an inward progress. In other words, our outward man is perishing, but the inward man is accelerating in spiritual growth. You know, I was talking to a man the other day, and I thought, and I, we've talked about it, I said, just think if you had all the money, you never had to go to God for finances, you had great health, never had any health problems, you had great friends, you never had to make new friends, you never had, you're not going to grow much. You're really not going to grow much. It's through adversity, it's through trouble, is when you call out to God. You grow greater in the valley than you do on the mountaintop. And so, you know, troubles is part of life. It's a few days, as Job said, but it's full of trouble. So let's use our opportunity when we go through trouble to go to God with it and ask Him to show us how to act about it and how to glorify Him through the troubled times and watch Him do some miraculous things things in your life. One time I had I was a basketball coach 40 years ago probably over at Bible College and the dean of students and when the basketball players that we had 12 players on our team and I said to him, "Look, if you're going to play on the team, you got to visit with me on Tuesday night." And you know what we would do? We'd load up in a van and we would go to a veteran hospital in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got privileged to go in there and talk to some of the men that were coming back from Vietnam who had been blown up and lost arms and legs and one day we're going down the hall and I heard this beautiful baritone voice singing. And he was singing Amazing Grace. So I took two or three of the guys that were with me and I said, let's go in there and find out what this is going on. So we walked in there and there was this young Afro-American young man who had been blown up in uh, Vietnam. And he had lost his arms and he had lost his legs. And the reason I know, because when I went in there, I said, can we talk to you? He said, come on in. He was singing. He stopped. He said, come on in. And I went in there to shake his hand. He said, I can't shake your hand. I don't have arms and legs. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And he said, you know, I, I took it hard at first, but it led me to Christ. And he said, you know what my ministry is now? And I said, what is that? He said, the Lord's given me a baritone voice that I can sing. And I sing praises to the Lord all day. And people come in, and sometimes I'm able to witness to them of what happened in my life. And I left there with the guys, and we got it back in the van, and I said, how many of you think your life has got trouble compared to the man we met upstairs? And, you know, I just thought to myself, thank God there's somebody else that has problems worse than me. And I need to quit focusing on me and help others that are going through a hard time and help them to come to Christ Help them to be able to, to, through their adversity, see God giving His grace, His heavenly resources to them. Well, let's have prayer together. Thank you for joining us, joining us this evening. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your greatness. And we thank you, Lord, that when we go through trouble, we'll come to you and we'll bring down these heavenly resources to help us. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.